Hey everybody, welcome back to The Spin Rack. I'm here with my boy, Cal. And today we're gonna to be talking about White Tiger. That film that's on Netflix is taking the US by storm. It is a movie about a servant who basically comes into his own. But the question is, how is that? So here I'm with, I am with um, um, Cal. Cal, what do you think about this movie? Um, just give us a brief synopsis of it and let's get into it. Well, okay. Briefly, it's, a sto it's the story of a uh, the story of man, Indian, born lower caste, and he has ambitions to rise above his station. And so in doing that, he finds his way to become a driver with uh, the guy who pretty much owns his village. And, you know, he, through circumstances, he uh, rises well above his stations. <laughs> he does. But the question is how? So let's start real quick and say, hey, what do you think overall of, um, I mean, we'll talk about that. What, what do you think overall of the movie? I liked it. I thought, uh, it, it, well, it's entertaining. Uh, great acting performances turned in by the lead. Uh, Chia, Chia Prok, um, Chia, oh, man, I'm fumbling over her name. So Priyanka let me just Chopra? say great acting. Huh? Yeah, Priyanka Chopra. Yeah. The one who's married to the- you know, uh, Great acting turn. The Jonas Brothers. Yeah, Nick Jonas. Yeah, Priyanka Chopra Jonas. Yes. You know, great, you know, great acting turned in by all of the leads. Uh, you know, solid, entertaining story. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I like the story, but you know, it was a, I consider it more of a dark, a dark drama, I guess. So I mean, there was a lot of funny um, episodes in it and it was uh, things in it, but it's um, basically a guy who, who's telling um, the prime minister of China, it's a story about the guy who's telling the prime minister of China, you know, how he, you know, his story, his, his life story, what's, what happened to him? How did he get to be a successful businessman and running this business of, um, I think cabs, cause that's all he really knew, running, running, running cars and how he was able to do it. And it's pretty interesting because it really highlights the, the issues, some of the issues they have in modern India with caste and, you know, like you'd said before, how, um, you know, what your destiny can be and how it's shaped by where you are and where you come from and what opportunities you have to do to take advantage of it. Um, my problem is, I thought it was a good movie all the way up until the end, I thought it was pretty good. I just didn't think the, the need at the very end to, and this will be a spoiler review, the need at the very end to, um, to kill one of the characters who was kindest to him. You know, um, I was pretty shocked by that, pretty taken aback by it, you know, um, I mean, in other, you're, you're basically a murderer, you know, for killing someone. But usually in these type of movies, you kill the bad guy, the bad guy being the person who is going to, um, who's harmed you. And the, this character that, um, who, who, who he ends up killing did not actually physically, well, I guess he was gonna harm him. He was gonna, he was gonna fire him and get a new, a new driver. And, you know, this guy, this is all he knew. He was a driver, he was a servant and he needed, um, he, that's what defined him. And once he realized that, you know, they didn't think of him, his masters or his um, employers didn't think much of him, he figured he had to start doing things outside the box to do for himself, to get better. But it was, uh, it was overall, it was pretty good. It's just that ending part that just threw me for a loop, you know, how he ended up uh, achieving this stuff. Um, what do you, what's your take on it? Well, I think if you look at it as an allegory, it's pretty strong. I, the, the bottom line is, I think a lot of people, because I'm looking at the reviews, and I thought a lot of people approached it as, okay, this is a comeuppance for the wealthy. This is a comeuppance for the rich who look down on poor people. Uh, I mean, some of this, I mean, the stuff that they're saying, uh, they're showing like about being a servant in India because of caste, you go to other places in the world, it's the same thing, caste or no caste. If you're a servant, I mean, that way they speak to people, treat people, you, you, you know, treat a dog better than the way that what they would treat a human being. But the whole idea is if you're a servant, it's like, oh, I can do whatever the hell I want. You know, with you, you're like, a, you know, literally, you're like my chair or my foot, you know, or, or my footstool or my bicycle, you know? And the same thing, if this bicycle gets run down or if I no longer like this bicycle, I'll get rid of it, get another one. And you are, you know, really out of luck at the end of the day. So I didn't find it uh, unique to, you know, the, you know, story set in India. I've just seen people treated like that, especially people who are servants. I mean, literally like the people in, uh, you know, like waiters, 
I mean, you come from the States and you know, everything is all this please and thank you and almost this excessive uh, nicety, you know, for these types of things. We go to like a different country and these guys are like, hey, you know, where's my stuff? Get it over here, jackass. You know, smack the guy in certain cases. Like, you know, this isn't hot enough. Go take it back. <laughs> you know, those types of things. And that's how they would actually approach to the whole, uh, to a servant. But, uh, you know, allegorically, this is a guy who says, look, I want to rise above my station. And he's just as ruthless as the people who are, you know, who are, in, who are his masters. He has no problem committing murder. He has no problem allowing his entire family to be wiped out, knowing that this is what the case is going to be for what he does. And the justification is, well, he was going to be replaced as a servant. Well, you know, again, we don't know if he was going to be replaced as a servant. That was the idea. We don't know. But he had been planning this anyway. He had been planning it. And, and he specifically says in the film that, you know, he was not, he had counted the money. He had counted the money and said that him taking the money, it was not enough. He said, this is two, three years salary. This is not enough for me to steal right now. It's not enough for me to commit this particular crime at this portion. Once the money was big enough, however, and it coincided with the right reason, then okay, I can commit murder. I can allow my family to die, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna improve my station. And when he's writing that letter, you know, when he's writing that letter to the premier, it's uh, amazing because he's, he's already, at least in his mind, he's justified everything by the success that he has. And that's where the bigger allegory comes in. It's like we, people tend to justify all of the, you know, the evil literally that they do by the end result, that the means just, you know, the, the means, the ends justify the means. So, you know, looking at that, you know, it's, um, I don't know, it's kind of horrendous what he does because the one person in the film who was consistently, you know, not perfect, but human with him was the master that he killed. That, that was the person, you know, the, his, uh, the guy who would have been like his headmaster, that guy treated him like a footstool. The other guy never trusted him. He would have never been able to kill the two of them because they would have never taken their eyes off of him. They never trusted him. The way he was able to get his master out of the automobile and say, can you please come help me with the tire? Those guys would have been like, you better get it done or I'm gonna come out there and beat you. He would have been in that rain by himself at the end of the day, but he knew that he could get this guy out. He knew that that this guy was human enough that he could get him out and commit that particular and commit that act of murder. So you know, like again, you know, you know, as an allegory, incredibly strong allegory as to you know th this person seeking to rise above his station and in doing that becomes just like the people who he's contending against. You know, in, in a in a in just about every shape and form, even if he is supposedly nicer to his employees. Okay. It's still he still got there based on the back of eighteen people being killed. Yeah, I know it's kind of crazy. I mean, we don't know. He never knew what happened to his family, but I mean, it's it's it's. He it was the reason I think what we have him is that he's put into a choice and put into a box that is that he has to um, either um, get married because it was for the family. If he and he didn't want to get married, and I guess the the, the whole thing is with the dowry system where the family, the mother, the the the, mother, the the grandmother who ran the whole family would get the money. He was supposed to be paying his giving his salary to them at one point, and he was, but then he stopped doing that. And they were, they they were the whole family depending on the money that he made as a driver. When he started thinking for himself, is when he started realizing that hey, you know, no one's thinking for me, and especially the um, his boss when they ended up killing somebody in a in a driving while they were drunk and playing around, and he they made him take the blame. And lucky for them, no one looked was looking for that child, and they were no charges were filed or anything. But the very fact that he felt that they were they were throwing him away and that's what made him turn. Um, and I guess he became ruthless, you know, like them. And when he realized that, hey, I was loyal to them and this is how they treated me. And then they're gonna cut me off as being a driver and I basically I have to do what I have to do. Um, it was a pretty good movie um, overall. I mean, just, wow, that ending was like, what did well, you he, expect? He was, ruthless he was ruthless before that because there was the guy who was the head driver and he wanted that position. He wanted right. to be the head driver. And when he finds out that the head driver is a Muslim, he pretty much gives him that ultimatum. He's like, look, I'm a, either I'm the head driver or I'm going to out you. And that guy, what does he, he has to leave. You know, it wasn't that he could say, oh, I want to be the second, let this guy be the head driver. He couldn't explain it. He couldn't uh, say, hey, look, this, uh, I'm, a, you know, I, I want this the guy to do it. Like, no, he had to leave. And this guy had, you know, his own family. You know, this guy, he knows, he knows how hard it is to, you know, find work, be a servant. What is he going to tell the people why he left? He's going to have to start all over again from scratch, if that. And right. his concern was, I want to be head driver. And he says it. 
the guy didn't deserve it. When I think about it, I don't feel good about it, but he was still willing to do it. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, the, the sad thing is this uh, society, he said the bosses didn't want Muslims in their employee. And when he found out that little secret, he was able to use it to, to get rid of them, to get. So you're right, that did foreshadow the type of ruthlessness he had. Uh, in him. I mean, this is a guy who was, and why he's called the White Tiger in his school, he was one of the smartest kids in school who may have been eligible for a scholarship, but you know, the family needed someone to work. I think his father had passed away. And so they pulled him out of school and he was what breaking coals. <laughs> and so he, he thought the next best thing is to be someone's servant. And this is the road it led to being a servant was being treated badly by some people, not necessarily by the one, well, I don't know, just because his, his Ashoka, who was his master, didn't exactly, uh, was kind to him many times, but when the, when the chips were down, he put them out to dry too. So it's, it's industry, industry, interesting, interesting. But I gotta say another big thumbs up for Netflix. Why, I'm not sure, can we honestly say that about the guy? You know, he gives him the day off and we see him with somebody else, but we don't know if that guy is gonna be his driver or not. No, no, I, we have to take, we gotta take, this, we, we can't take the narration of the lead character we have to take that. We can't take that at face value because we've already seen what type of guy he is, and he's already building. He's building up to murdering this guy. He was going to do it eventually. He just said he was waiting for a big enough payoff at the no, end I, of the day, and the payoff I, came. I agree, I, but I think this all got set off when they when they framed him for the murder of that little kid that they drove over. And so when he realized that, hey, they don't really care about me. You know, I'm just like he said, we're we're chickens in a coop, basically. You know, for the lower classes. Um, I think I, I'm with you on that 100% of the way. Um, but all I, I wanted to just say, Netflix has done another great job. I mean, it's Netflix being an international company. They're bringing these type of films with different perspectives and they're bringing it here to the States where we can actually see them and enjoy them. You know, and I like, I watch a lot of these other films, these um, foreign language shows, some of them, most of them dubbed naturally. But I think that, you know, it just shows us how there's all these different types of stories in the world. And many of them are very similar here that, we're, that we like too. You know, um, the guy who, who uh, the guy who gets lucky break and makes it to makes it to the big time. This is something along those lines, but how he gets there, he gets there in his own way. And uh, you know, in the states, naturally, they always want a happy ending. You wouldn't see something like this regularly, but you know, outside the U.S., they're willing to be a little bit more uh, less, more realistic in what people have to do to get to the top. What's it? Isn't it a U.S. made film? It's a U.S. made film, but the book was made by an Indian who, of course, who was educated here in uh, Columbia University. I think he won the, the, I think he won the Man Booker Prize, which is like the preeminent bo um, book prize, book writing prize in the English language. Um, yeah, I think what's this guy? The author's name is uh, Arvind Adiga, and he won. Yeah, this was his de debut novel. Um, the two, his debut novel, White Tiger, won the 2008 Man Booker Prize. I mean, that's like, you know, one of the top. It's like the, 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 the Nobel Prize of, of English language books. So if you get it, you get it. So he got it for this book. So it's very interesting. So enough kudos for that. Enough kudos for the book. Enough kudos for, for um, Netflix for bringing the movie. But definitely uh, it's a little, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough bite, but it's a very interesting show. So do you like it, Cal? I think I said I did. Okay, good. You know, the, just wanted to come back. Just wanted acting, to... I thought the acting was, uh, again, I thought the, yeah. you know, they yeah. turned in great performances across the across the board. I was very much intrigued by I was very intrigued by the allegorical nature of it. It's just again, I, I think a lot of people will take the film at face value, not think about it too much, and it just becomes this film of the you know the little guy, you know David versus Goliath, little guy against the big guy, uh, the poor against the rich, and not really look at this character and say, hey, look, this is uh, you know really looking at what this guy does at the end of the day. You know, I think a lot of times we justify things by the success, the monetary success, the material success that somebody achieves and not looking at everything that this guy did in order to get there and what he was willing to do in order to get there. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of damning in that I just found that, you know, they're showing the great socialists. Remember the great socialists, the woman who, uh, who's a great socialist. And, you know, socialism is basically everybody should get some of the wealth. And she's basically shaking down one of the most corrupt guys um the, the the his 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 um ashok's father the boss of his of um damn, what's the, name of the main character the main character the main character is uh balram balram's um boss basically the stork as they call him and he they, he's paying her what two million rupees um so that he can 
um, steal coal from the governments. <laughs> you know, you're like, what? Everybody's cutting, you know, cutting deals everywhere. And that's crazy, but that's what she did. You know what I'm trying to say? And, you know, if you wanted to be in the game, and that's actually funny because the money he ended up stealing was supposed to be the money they were bribing the great socialists with. What is it? I think it was 4.5 million rupees. You know, I, it's probably not even $100,000 or something, which is crazy. No, it was, I think it started off originally, she'd ask for 2.5 and they're like, no, we can't give you that money. But she wins the election. So they're like, I guess we're gonna have to give her that money and more because they, they turned it around. And uh, from what I'm looking at, and I may be wrong, the numbers are saying that it's like six, six hundred sixty-one thousand dollars let me double check that yeah sixty-one thousand dollars sixty-two thousand dollars that we're talking he took i mean come on <laughs> you know but hey that's a lot of money it goes there that's the a, power is pretty high pretty strong that's a lot of money that's, that's a lot of money here you move to the right place <laughs> you know you move out to a <laughs> you know, Delaware or someplace that's a lot of money there you know yeah. we're over here in new york city where sixty-two thousand dollars like what that that's like what rent for? That's like six months rent, depending on where you live in New York City. You take it to someplace else, you can buy yourself like, hey, spend half of it on a nice home, and the you know, oh, you, you, you spend that right. you know nice home. The rest of it, you can do some other stuff. You're one hundred percent right, my friends. So hey, I think if you have a chance, I think you should go out and watch this film. We liked it very much. Give it a thumbs up. Um, so definitely a mature mature subject. So definitely, I would say before you show it to any kids, you you are just very cognizant of it what's going on but it's, it's entertaining it's funny it shows you uh if you're going to show it to your kids show it to your kids show it to your kids watch it with them and really point out the stuff that matters okay really point out the stuff that matters because i think that's what's uh, if i was teaching this film i would love to show it to students not point out anything and then at the end of it say get their take on it and then point out the fact like well what about the fact that he uh you know let his whole family die <laughs> what about that i know also, just want to say one thing about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is, you know, you have American song raps, Jay Z's in one of them. You know, the 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 Mundian de Bacha K, it's a very famous um, song that Jay Z's part of rap. You also have Fat Joe, Get It Poppin'. You have Gorillas, which is a I guess a fusion band, I guess a rock band. Feel good. I mean, there's others, but I'm just saying it was pretty interesting that they included that stuff. In yeah, Angel Eyes is also part of it. Uh... Was it a uh, Mundi in June with the yeah. uh, the Night Rider with the Night Rider theme music playing? Yeah. So I mean, uh, I was actually talking. I was actually talking with somebody about that. The uh, the rhythm from Angel Eyes that has been on no less than four songs that I know of. Get out. Okay, it was a big hit. Well, yeah, it was a big uh, that rhythm. Dun, 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 dun. That rhythm right over there was on this song Murder She Wrote. I'm yeah. certain you heard Murder She Wrote before. It was a big hit by uh, Shaka Demas and Pliers. And they use that same rhythm for two different tunes. They use that rhythm for Murder She Wrote and another song, which was a cover of a song by Toots and the Matos called Bomb Bomb. And they use that rhythm on both of them. And then you have this other guy, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Raggy, a Canadian, uh, a Canadian artist. And he did, a, he did a Hindi song. And on the Hindi song, he, he uses the rhythm, okay? And has a you know, nice big Hindi uh, song in Hindi. Uh, he has a big hit off the whole thing. So he decides to do like a, like a somewhat English version of the song. Does he come up with a new rhythm? Like, no, let's uh, use the same rhythm we used for the other song. And he uses it again. And, and he has a, I think the biggest hit in English he has is on the song called Angel Eyes. And it's the same rhythm, <laughs> okay? And I, was, I just like always crack up because that rhythm is like at least four different songs and all four of those songs have been hits. Pretty certain whoever came up with that rhythm has not received any money. <laughs> that was probably like some like the studio band that came up with the money uh, with the rhythm. And these guys are probably like, oh man, it's probably like the same guys who came up with like Hambone or something. They're like, what? That's my rhythm. Bo Diddley is killing it. I want my money. <laughs> so just to make sure people understand, this is a Jamaican. Um, is the way the Jamaicans call their rhythm, um, where they have the instrumental and so this one's din 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 it's played in many if it's popular it's played in many different songs you know i don't know how the artist gets paid i mean the person who brings it up probably they get the uh they don't they don't mm. all right well <laughs> there it just goes you know but uh yeah i mean it's 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 used so many times there's some ry rhythms that you can see that are still in 
um, they're being used by reggaeton, you know, dembo, 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 dembo. But hey, we digress. <laughs> what can we say? Those guys, unfortunately, will get some money. They'll probably work it out sometimes. Right? But hey, once again, if you like the movie, check it out. Spin a rack. Out. Out. And all right.